All right, guys, you have any idea what the number one question I get as a uh, fly fisherman in North Texas is specializing in carp? Number one question, bar none, what fly do you use to catch carp? So we're gonna answer that question today. We're gonna have the top six flies, and unlike Mr. Rosenbauer, what about, what about, what about? Those you could disagree with me, and there's gonna be lots of what about, what about, what about, I don't want to hear your what about. This is my list. We're going to actually accept your opinions because opinions are like Everybody's got one, right? Okay. So, let's get into it. Number six fly. And we're going to go over at the end, after all this, why they're so good in a couple of aspects. And we're not going to limit ourselves to this. This is my opinion on what flies are great for North Central Texas, and I think they work in all of Texas, actually. So anyway, let's get it on, shall we? I'll stop wasting your time. Number six, we have the traditional mop fly. Wow, what a fly kills trout, <laughs> literally. Um, that's number six, simple. You do it in green and you can also catch buffalo, okay? Buffalo like greens, they like greens. Remember, carp are omnivores. I'm talking about common carp. They eat everything. However, it doesn't mean they will eat anything. They have to have something that's small enough to fit in their mouth, number one. Number two, it looks like it's in the, it's in the family of their, of their world, you know. It can't be some weird thing. I'll show you in the end what a weird thing is that you'll never catch one on. Number six, mop. All right, we're doing good now. Number five, whoa, you've seen this before, haven't you, fly fishers? The woolly booger, the big bad woolly. The woolly is like your desert island fly, and that goes for carp too. Um, I put it down on the list because um, I hardly ever have to go there. I hardly ever have to go to these flies right here because they're, they're pretty far down on the list. Let's try sticking this guy right here and see how that works. Okay. Whew. This fly, I hate it. I hate it because it's so stupid and so simple. I call it the stupid simple fly. This fly is one that I tied and there's a video for. It's the link to it's in the description. God dang, man, what a, it's embarrassing to me that a carp eats this fly, but they eat it like crazy. And all kinds of sunfish eat it. It is, a, and I've had bass eat it too. I mean, it's, it's a tiny fly. Formula's down there. Coming in at number for the stupid simple fly. All right, this one's a little different now. We're into something that you can buy off the shelf if you can find it, you can order. It's complicated compared to these other flies to tie yourself. Um, that's compared to the others. <laughs> these are all pretty simple flies and you can definitely do it yourself. However, I'm not a big fan of tying the Egan's headstand and number two, reason I don't especially uh, preach the Egan's is because the, the versions I've ordered have faded out over time. So this is supposed to be like a bright orange. I just painted that in so you could see it. Egan's headstand. So that comes in at number three. This fly um, is a, like a late summer kind of fly when bugs are actually looking kind of almost dead dead looking brown and kind of have this color. This is not a warning color. I don't know why it works, but Egan's headstand. Good fly. These are my opinions. This is the fly I carry. Um, I have to paint them all the time because they fade out over time. Now we're getting down to brass tacks here, folks. We're getting down to the flies that I use all the time. And I've caught hundreds and into the thousands of carp now over the last two decades of uh, being addicted. That's my addiction, so it is what it is. Number two, and it's not, you would think that as a fly tire and selling flies, I would make the number one fly, one that I tie and sell. Guess what, it's not. My fly, the Coyote Carp Fly, comes in at number two. The Coyote Carp Fly 
has enjoyed a renaissance with me tying it because there are some new colors of coyote by a local fur dyer here in North Texas. I'll put his link down there. Order some of these exotic colors of coyote from this guy. I've already had luck this season in the new colors I'm using. Coyote carp fly comes in at number two. Wow. Drum roll, please. Do we have a drum roll? I don't know. I'll have to see if I can get you one. The number one fly is a saltwater fly. And ever since I started fly fishing for carp 17 years ago, um, this has been one that I was told about by my guru. And it's easy to find in the stores. It's common. It's inexpensive. And I'd rather buy it than tie it because it is the Bonefish Bitters in tan. Size 8 Bonefish Bitters is the number one fly that I go to for catching carp in north central Texas. Size 8 Bonefish Bitters. You can't go wrong. I buy them by the dozen every year. So that's a great fly. Get you some. Thank me later. Good fly. Now what these flies all have in common is very, very important because like I know and like Rosavara says, there's going to disagree with me and there's going to be lots of what about, what about, what about, I don't want to hear your what about, this is my list. What about, what about, well, you're going to say what about this and that and the other and that's fine. I'm glad. I like to hear what you like to use. It's great. People use all kinds of flies in all kinds of situations. Let me just tell you though. If you want to use a berry fly, there better be some berries in the ground, in the water and on the ground because if there's not any berries, they're not gonna eat a berry fly. So that's that. Uh, corn, all that stuff, go for it. Have fun with that, great, great. Look at these flies. What do these flies all have in common? Take a hard look. They all run hook up. It's very important that your fly for carp runs hook up. Do you know why? It's because when we set a hook, it's a combination set. It's what I call a lift strip. So a lift strip is like this. You're lifting and, and strip setting at the same time. Upwards motion, right? Well, if the hook's facing down, when you do an upwards motion, that hook won't turn and catch before it comes out of the mouth of it. Look at the size of them. It won't, it won't catch before it comes out of their mouth. Has to run hook up. That's reason number one. Ha, that's, I just can't emphasize it enough. Has to run hook up. Number two reason, if your flies run hook down, you're going to get caught on the smallest. These things are bottom, 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 bottom. You're going to get caught on the smallest little roots and things. Grass roots, if you want to say that. Um, that you find carp in. So you'll be snagged and you'll lose flies left and right and you'll be hooking trees and all kinds of tree roots and stuff like that. And you'll be frustrated and then you'll be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at Tom Rosenbauer. He's just the one that says, what about, what about, what about? So anyway, I like the guy, I think. I never met him, but golly, he woke up on the wrong side of bed that day. Whew. All right, these are them. We'll get some close-ups of this. Guys, Simple, simple, simple. That's the number one rule. The top six flies in Texas, in North Central Texas, I'd say all of Texas. Mop fly can't go wrong. You can use that on so many different things. And if you do green, you're gonna catch some buffalo, I promise you. I promise you, I guarantee it. If you can present to a buffalo and get it down, way down, buffalo will eat that during certain times of the year. Okay, I'll, I'll qualify, during certain times of the year. Same thing with a green woolly booger. You can pick any color you want in a woolly booger. Um, the carp will eat that. This guy, if you've got water that is stained or off color, this they'll find this. The glitter in this, well, they'll find it. Don't, I don't know why they eat it, but they eat it like crazy. It's small fly too, tiny fly. All these flies are small compared to the flies you see on the shelf. And I'll show you a picture of one here. I'm, I've already, it's already in the pile of mess down there, I guess. Uh, that is not a Texas carp fly. The majority of flies you see in the store are not for Texas people. 
there for the Great Lakes and bigger carp and different situations. They're too heavy, the eyes are too big, the hooks are too big, and the flies are too big. So that's the thing about those store-bought flies you've got to watch for. These are the flies that catch carp in North Texas. Let's take a closer look. Okay guys, let's look at my top six carp flies for North Central Texas and most of Texas actually. It'll, these will work anywhere in Texas. Mop fly, really uh, commonly used for all kinds of fish these days. Um, kind of a cheater's fly, I'd say, but mop fly comes in at number six. Number five, woolly booger. You can tie it any way you want. Green is great because that works on buffalo as well. Number four, the stupid simple fly. You'll find that formula on the video that I did for tying this guy. So go into my description below and you can find out how to tie this one for yourself. Very, I've never seen it in the store. All right. Number three, Egan's headstand. Hard to find. I had to recolor the head here because uh, it faded over time. Store bought. Um, it's complex enough that I store buy this fly. A little difficult to find. Not very well made um, because of where they come from. So anyway, you can tie your own. Egan's headstand. Number two, coyote carp fly. My specialty. And I tie and sell these. Um, great fly. This is just a variation right here. This fly works really well. And the only one that works any better, and I'll admit it, it works the best of all these. And it's not a fly I tie either. This is a store-bought bonefish bitter size 8. And you can get this anywhere. Um, I buy these off of Rio. This is a Rio size 8. Heavy duty hook. This fly kills, man. It's a great fly. All these flies have one thing in common. They run hook up. Remember, hook up. You got to have hook up running because you're setting the hook and generally a very upward motion, a strip, what I call a, a lift strip. And that means that you're pulling up on the fly. If you're pulling up and the hook's down, what's going to happen? Not much of anything good. So you got to run hook up, people. That's one of the traits and the hooks we choose and all that. You know, adding one other detail, there's another link in the description for brand new coyote that you can find locally in North Texas in new colors. And I'm starting to tie these guys in new colors and it's like the, the, this fly, the coyote carp fly, has been revived.